Okay. So uh, a couple of you have asked about the RV10 project and how it's going. If you uh, look at the garage here, I'm going to make a short video and show you the status. It's easier than photos. Um, if you look at the garage, it's actually quite crowded. I've got two major uh, assemblies going on in here. This big piece here is the tail cone, and the fuselage is back here. We'll get, I'll show you that on video in a second. Currently in the project, we're mounting this horizontal stabilizer onto the tail cone itself uh, in the process of getting that square and then getting the proper holes drilled. So that's the status there. Um, I've got the vertical stabilizer and stuff also done. I'll show you that in the room. But uh, this, took, this, this piece here took me uh, about a year and a half to build, working on the weekends and in the, in the evenings at night. But duck under here. Got the fuselage on wheels so that it can it can be moved around. This is uh, the the front half of the airplane. Obviously, this is the back half. This is the front half. Uh, probably it'll be about another month or so, and I'll have these two joined up so that they'll actually be one big piece. Uh, I'm in right now in the process of finishing a couple of uh, odds and ends on the tail cone before I get that done. Um, sent this off to the Philippines to actually have a little bit of work done ahead of time and uh, worked quite well. So, uh, as you can tell, the garage looks crowded right now. Um, typically, I actually have quite a bit of room in here. Um, it's just a matter of, I'm working on some big pieces right now, so I have to have several big pieces out in the garage floor at one point in time. So, this is my uh, cabin top. It's pink because of the color of the uh, of the resin that they put into the uh, into the fiberglass. So it will eventually sit on top of the uh, of the fuselage area. These will be the back windows, um, and this will be the main cabin doors right down here. The doors will actually mount vertically, kind of like a Lamborghini would. So they'll all pull up and come back down. But uh, you can see a copy of the plans here on the wall. That's ultimately what it's going to look like. And if you look inside the tail cone, you can see that I've done a lot of work here in getting it all primed and uh, a little bit of corrosion protection. Um, trying to get as much done in a tail cone as I can possibly get done before I join up the forward fuselage and this back half together. But bell crank assemblies, this is going to end up being a push rod that I, uh, that I end up running the full length of the tail cone to control the elevators. So you can see the inside of it. Coming around to this side, you can see a ton of tools and chemicals down here. You can get the chemicals picked up and put in their own cabinet. This is my organization system. So I've got literally a label on everything. So you can tell me to find a very specific rivet and I can go find that rivet. Uh, within just a couple of seconds and you're talking about insane options of, of hardware or parts, it's actually nice to be able to walk right over and find it. So I've got everything from fuel system fittings to this is a uh, this is a fuel valve. So that's going to end up being my fuel valve that we use. I've got all kinds of different fittings in here. Um, works pretty well for me. So obviously there's, you can see my garage, this is my garage door up here. I was busy waiting on uh, kids to show up, so I got tired of that and decided to decorate my garage door. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, so the garage is obviously pretty crowded. Uh, I don't always keep the parts in here. I actually keep them in a bedroom here. I'll show you that bedroom and how I, how I have it laid out. But uh, when I'm working on some of these big pieces, I just pull them out here, work on them, and then send them back into the house when I'm done. So come on into the house. Well, before we do that, this is what the plans look like. You can see they're pretty well laid out. They're actually all uh, empennage attached, which is what we're doing. We're attaching the tail cone here. So all the steps are aligned in here. Um, the book is very, very detailed, um, all done with the CAD program. So you run into a couple of gotchas every now and then, but most of it's actually pretty easy. And i got a whiteboard to keep me... Uh, keep me honest so that I know all the stuff I need to do. Coming inside, 
this is kind of nice because right off the garage I've got this bedroom that is never used. And you can see I've got vertical stabilizers laying in here. I have rudders, elevators against the wall, um, as well as just other junk that I don't need. This is my aviation library. You can you can look through it and you can see all my power plant, airframe, general, AMP books, aircraft spruce catalogs, kit planes, Tony Mangellis books, you name it, I got that. This is my project from the EAA Sport Air Workshop. This is highly complex. You turn it on and you get a dim light and a bright light. But that was in an avionics wiring shop that was teaching us some of the basics. So, enough about my books. Oh, my airplane back here too. Those are kind of cool. What makes this room really nice besides being right off the garage is it has a walk-in closet. So I can come into the closet and literally have everything that I need. I know that up here are parts that I have not used yet uh, that are left over from the tail cone kit. So all these things that are up here on this side are still parts remaining that I know need belong to the tail cone kit. All the other ones actually belong to the fuselage. So I actually organized my parts. This is a sweater rack that you can get at Lowe's. It costs like nine dollars. And uh, I've actually organized it. So all my F, like 1020s and 1030s are here. My 1040s, 1050s, 1060s, 1070s are all here. So if I'm looking for a, I don't know, an F1031, I can come into the 1030s and right there's my part immediately. So makes finding parts uh, relatively easy. Same thing on this side. This is a shoe rack. costs nine dollars uh, at Lowe's. And I actually cut out the back side so I can actually lay longer parts uh, all the way through. So if they're too big to fit in the, in the other rack, they'll go into this one. So 10 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. This is going to be a 10 59. So I can organize all my parts there. And then, up, you know, up here on top, I have just large parts that uh, don't belong in the rack, but they're related to the fuselage kit. Steps, rudder pedals. This is going to be one of the control sticks. It's going to go in here. Um, down here, we have empennage fairings that are going to go together for the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, and the attach onto the tail cone. These are the windows that are going to go into that canopy that I showed you earlier. These are the back windows. Um, they're all protected in plastic right now, but you can see the scribe lines here of roughly where I need to cut. This is going to be the windshield for the airplane. He's in here. Um, so those are all just you know items too big to put on a shelf. Uh, more items too big to put on, put on a shelf back here, but they're all they're all really easy to find the way I've got them laid out. They're pretty organized. And uh, this is just another nice little cabinet here to have a bunch of different parts that I can use. So that's kind of how I do it. It works pretty well for me. Um, you don't want to waste a lot of time. Obviously, building the airplane takes a lot of time, so you don't want to waste a lot of time uh, looking for parts. So feel free to email me if you have any questions. I'll give you a lot of info.